Welcome to Healing Generations, a podcast creating a dialogue uplifting the importance of healing, strengthening, and supporting our communities, and that addresses the disparities and inequities in communities of color. Healing Generations is brought to you by the Healing Generations Institute, a collaborative initiative of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on our new releases. Welcome. I would like to welcome all of our listeners to the Healing Generation podcast. And um, this is Deborah Camarillo, and I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. And it's our honor to be able to host this podcast once a month from the National Comadres Network. And it's it's an opportunity for women to come together and to hear from other women what's been happening in their lives and the things that have led them and encouraged their healing generations. And for me, it's such a a privilege to co-host this with my comadre and maestra Susie Armijo. And for us, it's just a blessing to be able to present and to highlight other women that are on their journey of healing and to share that their knowledge and their lessons with us to this audience that we have that joins us. And, and we want to thank you. We want to thank you because we know that you could be doing other things, but you choose to make the decision to be with us for this next hour. And also, I know I, I, I always say this, and I'll never get tired of saying this, but I know that there's going to be something today that you will hear that will resonate with your heart and your spirit and it will bring more healing to your life. And that's, and that's the whole purpose of why we come together and do this podcast, because we want to promote healing, not only for ourselves, but for the next generations. So thank you for joining us. And with that, I, I just want to introduce, you know, my co-host and comadre, Maestra Susi Armijo, Comadre, how are you doing? How's it going down south over there? You know, what's happening? <laughs> Hi, comadre. Oh, thank you. That's a beautiful opening. I always appreciate hearing those words and just having that reminder about, you know, healing and being supportive for, for our women around the world. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. I feel so grateful in that way. I'm I'm doing good today here. Once again, coming to you from the Los Angeles, California area. I am in... Uh, the city of Pico Rivera at this time, Tangva Gabrielino land. Mm. I want to acknowledge the ancestors here. And just giving thanks to Creator um, for another precious day of life and for a beautiful weekend, a little quick spring break with our children and grandchildren up in Ashland, Oregon. It was nice to see that be up there in that nature and that beautiful, beautiful land with all the trees and all the birds and just all the beautiful plants and flowers blooming. It's a beautiful time. So I feel real grateful, real real rejuvenated and and a lot of healing went on, especially um, as always with our grandchildren. They bring so much healing that younger generation. Mm. So feeling real grateful. Thank you, comadre. Beautiful. And thank you for um, acknowledging, right, the land sisters. We sit on lands that for generations before we've arrived were occupied, right, in their spirit and their lessons, their teachings. And I'm over here on a lonely land, too, and and we want to give thanks to all their sacrifice, right, and all that they did to preserve as best as they could and reminds us of, of the things that we need to do, right? Mm-hmm. And with that, we're going to be bringing in a special guest today, which is very exciting and and going to bring in some other ancestors and other uh, territories. <laughs> so yeah. it's a beautiful starting already, and we're just grateful, Creator, to Creator, for allowing us to come together. But, Comadre, you want to introduce our guest today, and it's going to be an exciting time because we know this young woman, and yes. um, she's got a lot to bring, right, and uh, to share her journey with all the other mujeres that are listening today. Let, let's Let's present her. Oh, oh, it's an honor. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Our beautiful comadre, Pamela Marquez, uh, comadre, for, for many years, we've been so honored to to have her 
support, all her love and, and all her wisdom and teachings, the medicina that she brings connected to us, uh, our comadres nationwide. Pamela is a native Californian from Sacramento. She is the proud daughter of Jonas Marquez and Angela Nunez. Her family roots are in Chihuahua and Guanajuato, Mexico. She is a proud mother, a tia, aunt, sister, daughter, friend, warrioress, business owner, and of course, and I agree, a chingona. <laughs> she, she has mentored many, many women over the past 15 years, myself included, and assisted in the healing of their spiritual pain. She loves to spend her free time outdoors in nature and, or in her garden and prefers it to most things. That's where she's the most comfortable, and, and I'm sure she gets a lot of healing there mm. in, in her garden mm. among the plant people. Eight years ago, she attended her first Comadres Retiro in Halon, California, with us. I remember that day. Yes. And yes. Um, it was a spiritual rebirth of healing that began for her at that time. Mm-hmm. And it was from this meeting that she's been blessed and surrounded with the love and support of many, many sisters around the world. Uh, so grateful to have that experience and to continue walking the journey along with her. So yeah. gracias to creators, gracias Pamela for your courage to face your fears, rise above the challenges and just come into your power and, and be an inspiration for so many of us. Oh, Mateo. Yes. Um, oh, Mateo. Mateo. Just like to invite you, Pamela, now to um, please honor us with your palabras. Uh, if you can please share a little bit about yourself, your familia, background, or maybe a little bit about the work that you're connected to at this time. Whatever comes out of your spirit. This is just an, uh, a, a plática como yes. with, with you. And we want you to feel comfortable and just whatever you feel from your heart that you would like to share with us. We're all ears. We're all here for for you. Thank you. Thank you, comadres and maestras. And first of all, I just wanted to offer thanks for, uh, to the people of where I'm at, who are the Miwok and the Nisteyan. And I just wanted to honor them. I also wanted to call in the uh, spirit of the four directions and also my mama and my mm-hmm. dad and all my relations. And... Um, it's just so powerful now to know that I can call on my ancestors and um, just absorb all their knowledge and their peace and their prayers. And uh, so I'm here in Sacramento and it is cleared up right now, and, but it was raining really hard this morning. And um, I'm just really happy to be here. Uh, you mentioned earlier about my mom and my dad. So my mom and my dad are first generation here in the Northern California, and um, we planted our roots here. My mother and father were farm workers all their life until they finally settled here in Sacramento and, you know, became kind of mainstream American, followed the um, elusive American dream, right? And and they, um, and I love them because they, they drank the Kool-Aid. They drank the Kool-Aid. And, um, and I drank mm. the Kool-Aid about that American dream. And uh, come to find out, it wasn't really all, all true. All of it wasn't true. So um, let's see. I uh, love to travel. My favorite place to go to is, you know, the motherland, Mexico, mm-hmm. because I, I feel the most comfortable there. Mm-hmm. I feel like everything makes sense there. Everything just makes sense. It just, it just, I flow differently there. My spirit just sings when I'm there. And I, and I'm not, uh, I don't speak Spanish. I speak Spanish enough to get by. And, uh, but it's enough to be embraced by, by the people. And, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember what, what the rest of the question was. Just what, whatever you want to share uh, about your background or, or the work that you're connected to at this time. Um, oh, well, right now, connected to Pamela Me. Oh, I, that um, is you. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, and I don't say that, you know, haughtily or I say that with much humility because I have finally come to a place in my life where I am going to focus on becoming more of the best woman that I can be. 
Mm. Spoke to you this morning and, and uh, I was reflecting on some of the things that I might say here today. But, you know, you can't really go by that because it's right. all going to flow naturally, right? Just like we're in circle at Retiro. But I, I let me go back to that Retiro. My first Retiro was, I let me tell you, if no one's been to a Retiro, please go to the next Retiro. It is life-changing and you will not look back. That's the way it was for me. And not knowing indigenous spirituality at that time, like, I, like I've been learning since that time, I knew that I was seeking and I knew that I had, I don't even know how I enrolled in that, but it came into my email, my spam box probably, and I was cleaning my spam and something about a retiro and some people named, you know, Susie and Deb and Sara, and I didn't know any of these women, but Sara kept on encouraging me to to come. And, and I, I even backed out on the last day and said, I'm not going, I'm not going. And I texted her, I said, I'm not going to be there. She goes, no. She only said, she said, just come. And I trusted her on those words, just come. Mm-hmm. Not knowing what to expect, not to knowing anything. Uh, the first two women I saw were Maestra Susie and Maestra Debra. And they were so welcoming and just so full of love. They came up to me and they hugged a complete stranger. And it was just so peculiar to me because I don't hug complete strangers. <laughs> <laughs> but these women did. And um, and so I felt very welcome at that time and and just felt safe so I could just expose myself. So I'm very grateful for that time and learning all those um, lessons of that weekend and many lessons from the following retiros. So um, thank you. I am uh, currently just, I stopped working back in August. It was a sudden move. I, uh, August 10th, I'll never forget it. I'm I'm just said, this is it. Done. I can't work anymore. I can't do this job anymore. I am a social worker and I have worked primarily with, in the past few years, past 10 years, with sexually exploited women and children and unhoused families. Uh, so it's a it's a population that it my heart aches so much mm-hmm. when I work with that population, but it was um it was interfering with my growth and who I was as the a woman, the woman I am becoming, the woman that I know to be kind and loving intelligent, creative, the things that I did not know about myself eight years ago. And so uh, it was hindering me. And one thing I had forgotten to do when I was coming home from work is leaving it, it, all of it, my family's back at my office. And um, I had forgot to smudge myself down when I got home, you know, just taking, removing everything that I had, um, that had attached to me during, during the day or even the week that I had forgotten to release. And so for months and months, I was doing that. I had just, I had just been the job and not thinking about me, forgetting about really about how important I am and um, sacred I am. So on August 10th of last year, I went into the office, and I'm not going to go into the episode that I created, but uh, <laughs> it will. Um, it was my last day. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I left my job amicably, and um, I haven't looked back. I am now in total trust of the universe to take care of me, to um, rely on the knowledge of my ancestors and... Um, lots of prayers, <laughs> and just not to be afraid, you know, not to be dependent on things that I have taught to be dependent on, like um, job security, insurance, mm-hmm. money, vacation time, all that stuff that I was told was really important, you know, get a good job, with all the benefits, and blah, 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 and it's all going to work out. Well, it didn't work out. It didn't work out for me. I was 
more unhealthy as a social worker than I have been in my life. Wow. Even um, in my early, early years when I was uh, making bad decisions for myself and um, not really caring for myself, not loving myself. I have a, I have a, a long history with um, drug and alcohol abuse. I mean, I, I, for 40 years, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I was involved in that lifestyle and, and I let it rule me. I, I let my, all my decisions be made on the hustle and whether I could um, keep high, let's say that. Right. Um, maintain my high. So I was. I lived that way for 40 years, and I brought my daughter into that lifestyle, unfortunately. And I dragged her around that for a few years. And some reason, some reason, a divine reason, right? A divine reason. I mean, I don't get those good ideas by myself. I was testing it once again for the sheriff's department, and um, they were they had a pretty good handle on my life. And I was testing for them, and I and I, something said, I think after you get out of here, you need to go to an AA meeting. Mm. And I went to my first AA meeting, and I, I have not looked back since, and I've been uh, sober since uh, 2005, I, 2005. So that's a pretty good yeah. stretch. That's a pretty good stretch. And so that's then I can good. focus on now. Now that I've made that decision and I'm, have stood firm in it. I can get on with what life is really, really about. And it's been a challenging transition from that person to becoming the spiritual warrior, warrior rest that I want to be, that I, that I am, mm-hmm. have chosen to be. So uh, I'm happy with that decision. It allows me to be uh, the best Pamela I can be, even on those days when it's not so easy to be nice or happy or altruistic. Because, I mean, for me, those days are challenging. I don't know. I, I see some some women that just seem to be skipping a life as all spiritual. And I said, you know, why can't I be that? That's not my journey. That's my, my journey. My journey is a little bit more harsh, but it's because my journey has that long stretch of... Um, alternative lifestyle, um, I'm able to help a lot of women in the same situation. And that's, um, those are the women that I've mentored over the past 15 plus years, um, showing them that there is a different way. And uh, that it's, you know, well, I, I, it's okay. So with that said, let's move on. You know, I don't really, <laughs> you know, because I don't like to Okay, let's not move on because here it goes. Here, here I come up with an idea here. Um, I don't like to speak on that part of my life, mm, right? Mm. No, even though no, it was it. <laughs> uh, because yeah. I like to I I like to um, be present in this this nice little facade that I've created that life is yes. everything is awesome. But that's not that's not the truth, Pamela. The truth is that you lived a colorful life for forty years. Mm. And now you're this a different facet of the same woman, which is better, yeah. you know, I ca- because I cannot divorce myself or cut that piece out of my my spirit. Right. It's just it is. It is what it is. And that and that I think is the, the beautiful part, because when you began your introduction and you said, you know, my parents are from Mexico. And that's my favorite place to be, is Mexico. And you said, I don't speak the language. I can get by. But there's a connection and there's this acceptance of the land to you. I thought that was such a beautiful picture in really what happens for us in life. Now, I know, you know, I've shared before on this podcast, like, I'm uh, part Puerto Rican. My mother's, you know, Puerto Rican, and she came from the Puerto uh, the Puerto Ricans that um, at the turn of the century they took them from the island of Puerto Rico and they shipped them to the islands of Hawaii, and her family ended up on the Big Island of Hawaii. My mother was born and raised in Hawaii as a Puerto Rican woman. The first time I took my mother back to Puerto Rico. And the plane hit the ground when the wheels 
hit the ground when you land. She burst into tears. And she just started to cry in, in joy mm. because she connected. She was at home. And she knew that her spirit was, you know, was unified there with that land because that's where she's from, even though she had never stepped foot on the island before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's worth mentioning because as we talk about healing, and this is what this whole podcast is about, right? Healing begins when we can embrace our whole self. Good, bad, and ugly. Mm -hmm. The colorfulness <laughs> <laughs> that we bring, right? And I'm so glad that you mentioned about the journey with substance use. Because there's so many of our women that need to understand that that might be part of your journey, but it doesn't have to be your only part of the journey. Right. And I say that because I have been through that too, and I've got now 30 years or so not using substances either, right? I was a heroin addict. And so I just, you know, want to thank you for bringing that point and acknowledging that when we really want to seek healing, and it's the hardest journey we're ever going to have, mm -hmm. it is about embracing our whole self, whatever that whole self is. And it could be, you know, in a picture with different ethnicities, with different races. But we have to embrace our whole self because that is who we are. And so, as I say that, I, I, I would like for you to speak a little bit more on what the embracing of your totality as Pamela, how has that journey been? And what are the things that you feel have helped you through the most difficult parts to embrace? You know, in the early days of my youth and of my, as a young woman, there was religion, right? Religion. And it was, um, it was a scary thing for me. Mm. So I ran as far away from religion as I could. Now, I wasn't disrespecting it because religion does play such a, an important part in so many people's life. It played a huge part in my mom and my dad and, and, and my, my grandma, my grandparents, right? Um, and, and it really was a, a vital piece of who they were. But it scared me because I did not understand it. And, and, and um, my family was, were not great communicators. At, and um, so there wasn't a lot of conversation but about anything in my family. It was just no ask no questions, just do as I say, just continue move on, and but and, and that was the the times right the sixties. I mean, you didn't question too much of your parents. Not not this little Mexican girl didn't question anything, but it scared me and um, it scared me to go to go to church. And so I when when I could, I ran as far away from that as possible, and I sought things um, substitutes. <laughs> that weren't, weren't very good, and the drugs and the alcohol. And um, when I got sober, there is that re a religious piece of it. But um, once again, it did not uh, work for me. So I, I started to seek other things, and I um, started to seek through different religions what would be a good fit for me. I still, still not knowing uh, my own roots, my own spiritual roots. I still did not know them. I did not know anything about um, medicine or an altar or, or the four directions or, you know, the, all those things that are so important to me now. Mm -hmm. So for me to become the woman I am today, there had to be this a spiritual aspect of it. I mean, it doesn't have to be a religion because um, my spirituality is really connected to a madrecita and, and the earth. And that's why I like to spend so much time out there in, in, her, in her love and in her embrace. And uh, she teaches me so many lessons there. And, and you know, it sounds really not, not kind to say that I would prefer to spend my time outdoors than, than with, um, or in the garden, than even people. But, but 
I mean, let me just say that when people come over, that's the first place they go because the warm garden, my garden is so lovely that it pulls people out there and they just, um, they just, they know what I'm talking about when I, when I'm out there. And, uh, so for me, nurturing what I have learned, the spiritual piece of myself is, um, what I want to continue to do for the rest, for the rest of it, because you, I think someone called me young early, early on, and I thought, oh my gosh, that hasn't happened like in forty years, <laughs> because I, I'm not twenty six, but I am sixty two, but I think I'm twenty six. But um, so for the rest of my life, I get to focus on um, really me, because I, I want to go out as the best Pamela as possible, even though there is longevity in my family. My my, my people have, don't cross over until their mid eighties, right? So I'm kind of banking on that, that I, I can still have a, a long life, but you never know, right? You never know. So um, my spirituality and um, just staying in connection with the things that make sense to me, the burning the medicine, my altar, my connection with my all my relations that have passed and, and uh, the, the thing that I, I'm, I'm really into right now is blowing my conch because it has to, to blow that. You have to blow from such a place down here and I'm pointing Absolutely. to that, that chakra where, where I used to hold so much stuff, just my fears, my dislikes, my everything the bad things that I had um, done, the bad things that were done to me, um, I just held them there and they sat there. And so now that I get to play my conch, I get I have to get that out. Mm-hmm. And I and it's not you know and I and I feel it. I feel this release. And um, my you know I, the way I came about my conch was it's been sitting in my backyard for like twenty years. Wow. And. Um, my comadre came over and said, "She said, why is this? Why is this out here on, in the in the backyard?'" And I said, "Oh, because it's always been there. That's where my dad had had it, right?" Mm. And um, she goes, this, "You can know, you can blow this." So she showed me how, and it's been like that ever since. So that's one of my favorite things to do now, besides burning my medicine all the time. So I was waiting for you for the last twenty years. <laughs> That's the that's the chapter in the story of my life. That those kind of things happen to me. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for your transparency and just inviting us to your inner world there. It takes a lot of courage. It it also takes a lot of courage to be able to um find the strength to be able to surrender, to trust in creator, to guide you. Uh, not knowing what those next steps are, being in that unknown place, but but waiting with great expectations. I know it's taken you, I can't even imagine um, the journey it took you through your your addiction and um, making it to your recovery, all the lessons that you learned there, but still being able to to speak about and embrace all of who you are. At this point, this chapter in your life, this new chapter, uh, your light and your dark, um, not forgetting where you came from, so powerful. I, I know you said in the beginning uh, in your bio, you know, you prefer to stay uh, among the plant world, your garden. It's it, it's brought you so much healing. And, and I imagine, you know, with all the healing properties that, that I'm familiar with of, of the plants, um, and what they offer, their medicina, the the powerful gifts that we receive from uh, Mother Earth. I, I'm just curious to know if if it's even possible to explain may, maybe some of the most powerful lessons that you've learned in working with your plants and working with that medicine. You know, I, I, I'm familiar with it from the, the Mayan philosophy as far as spiritual bathing and, um, you know, cleansing, you know, for reproductive health, using those those powerful herbs to do that for us as mujeres. But I'm sure there's many, many more. But if you'd be willing to share some of those lessons, maybe even about the seasons of the plants or the seeds or, or the healing properties, whatever that is for you that's helped you 
to have the strength to rise above all those challenges and, and continue to go forward uh, in such a powerful way. Thank you. Thank you, Comadre. Um, I love my plants. You know, mm. when it was raining earlier today, I was just, I was happy for me, but I was happier for my plants because they were getting extra love. Mm-hmm. And, um, and one of my friends texted, I texted her that and she texted me back, yeah, that she was happy for her plants too. I start everything from seed because I just like to, I like to see how Madrecita does her thing through seeds. And and it's so amazing to see the journey of the seed, you know, um, from just planting it and then it um, it's pushing its little head up, poking through the soil and it still has the, um, the shaft of the seed, but there's also a plant on it and it's... Um, continues to push up and you know it reminds me of following the light mm-hmm. you have to follow the light mm-hmm. right and that's what that the seed doesn't the seed just knows when it when it where the light is mm-hmm. and it pushes up it doesn't push down into the darkness it pushes up into the light to where it knows that it can be nourished and loved and um, embraced and and if you're my plant, you're going to get extra love. So, um, <laughs> and, and it's it's funny because I had I I carried each one of my plants in today because I didn't want them to get beat up by the storm. Although I wanted them to get rain, I didn't want them to get beat up by the storm. So they're all in the shed now. But um, I've been um, talking a lot with Madre Sita about corn because her and I have this thing about corn. She wants it and. I really don't want as much as she wants to give me. But she's the boss. She's the <laughs> boss. So I just have to go with it. So I said, once again this year, I said, I can't plant any corn because I'm planting all jalapenos. And uh, well, she, she said, well, do you think so? Well, or something. But she, <laughs> there's like eight stalks of volunteer corn out there. So I said, oh, okay. So so what do I do? I plant the beans next to the corn because that's what I'm supposed to do. Right. And it's it started to take off. And then I said, okay, so I'm going to start some other some more corn. I'm just not going to leave the volunteers there because she's the boss. Madrecita is the boss. I just have to go with her. Um, oh. But uh, one of the things I love to do is when I the corn is full, is, you know, seven or eight feet is I just like to go out there and lay, lay with the corn. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't been able to lay with the corn and listen to it, it it actually embraces you and it sings to you. Um, So if you can lay with the corn while it's standing upright, it, it will do those things for you. And uh, so now I know why she wants, Madrecita wants me to have corn so I can, perform that ritual that I started last year, every year. So I guess I'm going to plant corn for the rest of my life. That's so beautiful. (laughs) And, um, yeah, I invite you all to my um, garden. I have a a lot of flowers that I use to cook with or to use as for limpias or for bats. And I recently have my new favorite, I think it's pericon. I think that's, that's it. Yeah, that's my new favorite because it is just powerful. I, I I recently purchased was able to purchase some out there where you are, my Esther Deb, and um, I drove it home. And my car, I was wondering why my car was just like I was so happy on the drive home because I was being loved by this this fragrant um, flower, and I oh that's that's why you know. You know, there's no mistake that we say all my relations. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a that's an intentional phrase, you know, from our ancestors, right? Because they understood better. I think we're learning, right? But they they were able to just live in that that element where we're so um, in our cities and things like that. So you know, so kind of far from that. But just the concept all my relations, right? And understanding that that connection, we say, in 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 Nahuatl, right? It's that sacred connection that we have 
not only to each other, but really to all the elements in this dimension. And we know that our uh, plant teachers, that they have life, you know, that science has proven that, you know, that they respond when you talk to them, you know. And so we know these things and the, uh, the gifts that they offer, right? You said the fragrance. Of course, we package it and call it aromatherapy or, you know, we make things <laughs> that all of a sudden it, it becomes acceptable in this, <laughs> this mindset, right? But these are these are gifts that have been really been honored for for thousands of years, you know. And uh, and I just have to say I loved your description of that little seed bursting out, and that key was to reach for the light, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. we talk about this a lot, right? That if we can honor the light, if we can you know, be in in alignment and congruency with the light, which gets represented by our our beautiful teachings and ancestry that we that we have, right? Those beautiful sacred teachings that have been have been there for thousands of years. Then we really can have a better sense of who it is that we are, right? When we have that connection connection and alignment. And I know that you've been practicing this for a while and I've actually kind of put it together in a gift for the community. And I will, I want you to share about this beautiful gift, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and through because it's your whole life experience that has gotten you to this place. And now the honoring of that, and it's, it's really a gift to whoever, um, you know, comes in contact with it. And I, I just say that because I have had the, the privilege to be able to, to come in contact with that, and I'm, I don't want to say nothing yet. Uh, it really, uh, you know, it was so nourishing to me. So can you share a little bit about uh, what you're doing? Uh, thank you, Maestra. This is the joy of my life right now. Um, and I'm so happy that I have it to to kind of direct me and keep me um, grounded because it definitely keeps me grounded. It is def- it is a gift that I received from the women in Mexico and from my grandmother and from all the women who have ever worked with the hibiscus flower. So I am um, I have started a company. Um, uh, my brand is Jamaica Tea. Now, I know we are all familiar with Jamaica tea, but the world at large is not familiar with it at all. That's what I'm finding out. And I'm thinking, why doesn't anyone know about this medicine? Because we use it as medicine. Right. I mean, especially after um, ceremony, um, like if I go to women's ceremony, women's lodge, uh, I bring this um, Jamaica to the ceremony. And it just, what it does to our bodies after ceremonies, not only does hibiscus has been used traditionally to, to reduce temperature, um, stomach issues, uh, full of vitamin C. So, I mean, there's just a lot of health components to it. We know this. Our, our grandmothers knew this. Our great grandmothers know this. There's so many women. The hibiscus flower is used in so many other cultures. And um, by the way, it's not indigenous to Mexico or to this continent. Um, so... I go to Mexico quite often pre-pandemic, and I would always drink the awas, and the awas are just fabulous in Mexico. All you know, agua de piña, agua de sandía, all of them, and agua de Jamaica. Well, nothing like that is ever found here in Sacramento. Maybe, maybe in your regions, but not in Sacramento. We haven't arrived there yet. So I, I started my own business, and I. Uh, that came about recently, but I started brewing years ago, and I had some comadres come up and tell me that it was definitely medicine because it changed, it, it, it altered the way they felt at that moment, and that's what it does. And that's what, um, if you talk to the women of Mexico, they will tell you that that's that it will um, affect women more differently than it does men, and that it, it um, helps in, with our depression. 
because flowers just do help. They help with our depression. I mean, even if somebody brings you a bouquet of flowers when um, you're sick, I mean, it, it lifts you. Absolutely. So, uh, so I, I started out with this original blend, but, you know, pandemic hit and uh, I was crying in my garden where I cried many tears. Um, and I was talking to the grandmothers and, and I said, I said, I need something else. I need something to do because I'm going crazy here. And they said, all they told me was jalapeno. That's it. And I said, I don't know. I don't know what the heck. What does that mean? Jalapeno. And, and they basically said, figure it out, you know, mm. and, uh, and I did. <laughs> so I created a jalapeno Jamaica. Oh, and yeah. it, is, it is a unique blend. It, no, not too many people have tried, um, attempted that blend before, but I have mastered it. And um, so as my creative juices continued, I um, started to blend uh, another blend of nopal mm. and jamaica, mm. which is my favorite. And it is uh, it's, um, one of those things that just when it radiates through your body and shoots out, you're just, thank you. You're in gratitude. You're, you're mm. definitely in gratitude. Mm. And, uh, and I, uh, when I get to blend, I get to call in all, well, brew. When I brew, I call in my, every woman that's ever touched hibiscus is is in the kitchen with me and I you know I get to I, I'm so happy that I'm in the kitchen alone because I'm in there crying mm. right I'm crying and making tea because it's so <laughs> healing for me and I'm um, working with this flower and the, and the properties of this beautiful flower and um, because I, I do work with the whole flower I don't you know they sell hibiscus tea but it's crumbled and dry and in little bags and People have, women have said, well, how come my tea doesn't taste like yours? And I, I can tell you a lot of reasons. But um, so that's my business. And the name of my company is Pussy Gata Jamaica. Mm. So it's a play on my Spanglish because that's what I'm proficient in. <laughs> and um, the name of my cat. And the name of your cat was? I call him Gato or Señor Gato or Pussy Gato. <laughs> And uh, his name came from Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez, <laughs> the fastest mouse in all of Mexico, <laughs> used to, you know, was able to outwit Sylvester at every turn. Mm -hmm. So that's where that name came from. And he would call him Pussy Gato. It's just amazing, right? Because even, even the simple little thing, right? All our relations. Mm -hmm. So even within your Jamaica tea, you have the four-legged relatives they're represented to along with you. So that, that's, that's a beautiful <laughs> little, little part. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really proud of it, and, and it, the tea does bring me so, so much joy. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought I, the, anything in the kitchen could make me as happy as that. Powerful, beautiful in the air. You know, you're sharing how you can lay among the corn and how the corn sings to you. And as you were talking, I I was envisioning all of these abuelitas, all of these powerful grandmothers, ancestors, just singing around you in that kitchen, mm. just putting mm. all their love and wisdom and healing properties inside of it, just guiding you every step of the way. It's such a beautiful vision I just saw right now. Um, and I just want to share that with you. I want you to know that you're you're, you're not alone in that kitchen. I know you know that. Mm. <laughs> they're, they're, they're singing and just mm. healing along with you. You're, you're healing for them as well. So God bless you for that. Definitely. And you know what? I, and I, I'm so honored to be doing what I'm doing because I'm, I'm representing so many women that weren't given permission to follow their dreams mm -hmm. or um, use their talents to the best. Mm -hmm. And mm. so my mother and my grandmother, for example, mm -hmm. and so I'm really um, living that for them. You know, one of the times I was in Mexico, um, this woman gave me this spoon, a wooden spoon, long wooden spoon, and it's beautiful. It's hand done and everything. It's, it's just beautiful, very simple. Because I was up in the hills of Chiapas, and and uh, she she gave me this spoon. She gifted me this spoon, and and I and I brought it back on the plane. Um, so 
carefully. I mean, it was like I just hand carried that thing all the way from Chiapas to Sacramento. And um, I use it. I, I call it the ancestral stir. <laughs> so, so that's the reason mm. that spoon was given to me, right? I mean, because I brought it back here and, and years later I'm using it to do it the ancestral stir for these women in Chiapas and the women of Mexico and all my relations. Powerful. Well, we're coming to the end of our time, although we could talk to you forever, como tú sabes, <laughs> the way we always do. Uh, but before we leave, I'm wondering, um, maybe what is some last advice that you would like to give or offer uh, to those listening um, that are on their healing journey that might be helpful for them in, in terms of their own healing and, and their own health and well-being and connection to all our relations? For me... Now, it is, if it doesn't bring me joy, I need to, I need to let go of it. Mm. Because, um, you know, like I said, I'm 62 and who knows what's going to happen. I mean, there's longevity, but who knows? Yeah. So um, I don't want, if something should happen, I don't want to be in a space where I'm not joyful. And I have to be, mm. jo- I want to be joyful. So I seek that out as often as I can. Like I said, you know, being a human, you got to go to that other space. The opposite of joyful, too. Right. And your health. Your health is so important. You know, I'm sitting here. I had a freak accident a couple of weeks ago. I have two broken ribs. And I think, oh, my gosh, and I can't work. But I don't have a job now. I, do, I mean, I really can't work. So that scares me. But I'm not scared to the point I would have been. So find joy. Take care of your health. And your mental health, to find find out how you can do that, whether it's singing, whether it's drumming, whether it's playing the conch, whether it's burning medicine, whether it's finding your garden, your happy space. Stay there as much as you possibly can. Mm. Well, Pamela, thank you so much. Thank you for, for spending this time with us and, and sharing your life experiences and your healing journey. Uh, you know, with us. I think for many women, and speaking about those that struggle with substance abuse, struggle with mental health, you know, struggle with trying to find a purpose, Mm -hmm. you have definitely set an example that even those struggles that we go through, it doesn't mean that it has to be our destiny, Mm. you know, and, and that we have the ability and we have the opportunity to really metamorphose that and to that life of healing and joy, you know, of strength, you know, to help us to get to to live a, that quality of life that we all want to, to share in. So thank you so much for opening your heart up with us this afternoon. Um, and I just want to just say to our listeners, I know, uh, you see, I, I told you you were going to hear something you needed to hear today. And uh, there's so many things that um, was said that was so beautiful. And I'm leaving with that. Remembering that little plant is looking for the light and was going to push his head out for that light, you know. And that's a wonderful reminder of um, healing generations, right? Because mm-hmm. in, in the healing, it's going, it's, it's, it's facing upwards towards the light to heal our hearts, to heal our minds, to heal our bodies. And so I am taking away a lot of good things today. Comadre, what about you? I, I'm just still um, absorbing uh, the beautiful words that she shared about, and as a mujer, and, and so many mujeres that I work with that we forget, is do what brings you joy mm. and enjoy and allow ourselves to enjoy is so so vital, so important, and I just had a dream from my grandmother that was came to me. I I haven't dreamt of her in years, and and she was licking mm. an ice cream cone, and I said, "What are you doing, Grandma?" And she goes, "I'm enjoying this ice cream," and mm. then she said, "What do you do that brings you joy?" And then mm. I woke up, and so it's just so much in alignment with what you just said, and and it's almost like another confirmation, like. Uh, am I allowing myself to have time to enjoy? It's not all about work. It's also about 
you know, experiencing all the beauty of nature and all our relations and, and on every mm. level. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yes, and we want to thank you, uh, our listeners, for joining us again. You know, we're so grateful for your accompaniment on these podcasts. You make it so that others uh, will keep us on <laughs> and keep listening. And, and also for Mujeres, we, you know, this is a safe place for us to just to have a heart-to-heart conversation with no expectations a performance, a place where we can take off the mask and just sit in ourselves. And we thank you. We thank you for joining us on this adventure, on this Healing Generation podcast that is sponsored once a month by the National Comadres Network. So as we close today, we just uh, say bendiciones, bendiciones to all our listeners out there. And this is Deborah Camarillo saying goodbye until next month. Enjoy. <laughs> that was Maestra Susie and Pamela. Have a wonderful rest of your day, ladies. Gracias. Adelante. Bendiciones. For more information about Healing Generations and the Healing Generations Institute, visit nationalcompadresnetwork.org and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our new releases. <laughs>